ninth game of these thrilling playoffs saw Leeds United overturn a 2-1 deficit to beat Carlisle and leave Gary McAllister jumping for joy. Tonight, Doncaster Rovers will be looking to join them in the final. Sean O'Driscoll's men have turned on the style all season. The Kimo fans will be hoping for more of the same this evening. But South End stand in their way, and Steve Tilson's side will fancy their chances after a tight first leg. For both, Wembley is still in their sights. No team has ever gone from conference to championship in five years, but that is the target for Doncaster, and now they're just two games away. South End were champions of this division in 2006, relegated in 2007. This time, promotion must be achieved the hard way, but their fans believe. It is the League One playoff semi-final second leg. Doncaster Rovers against Southend United, live from a very noisy Keep Moat Stadium on Sky Sports 1, and also available in high definition HD1. That's channel 408. Nothing between these sides seven days ago, but we must have a winner tonight, be it in extra time, penalties, or indeed a very late goal, as Peter Beagry witnessed last night, the game between Carlisle United and Leeds United at Brunton Park. And Peter, I just wonder, has uh, Leeds getting through to the final up the ante, particularly for Doncaster? It has certainly with the fans, you know, that's the buzz round. Leeds are already there, they won an all Yorkshire final, but you know, arguably in, in South End, they've got one of the most prolific um, forward lines and midfield uh, to cope with in this division. We didn't see it in the first leg. They can play, but have played better and certainly can play better. Same could be said with Doncaster, though. Did you see any clues in that first leg seven days ago as that give you an idea of how it might go here tonight? Well, there's some important changes. I mean, Richie Wellens has come back for Doncaster, who's a pivotal player for them. He gets on the ball, demands it in any area of the pitch, and he gets them playing. We didn't see a lot of Coppinger, who's another one at the top end of the pitch, can create absolute havoc when he's on the ball with his close dribbling sk skills. But we also didn't see McCormick and Bailey, the two centre midfield players, who've got 20 goals between them for South End. And the, and the only performer on that night for them, I think, was Gower, real threat. These playoffs are littered with stories of, of clubs who've come an awful long way in a short space of time. Could you argue that Doncaster have come further than any of them? Absolutely, and, and a dear penny, you know, when he got on promotion from the, uh, the conference, did an outstanding job, and um, he left with a lots of pats on the back, and, and Sean O'Driscoll has taken up the gauntlet, and he's also he's given him silverware already in the Johnson Paints trophy, so very forward-thinking manager is Sean O'Driscoll. Well, his chairman, John Ryan, calls him the Arsene Wenger of the lower league, but from his experience of this playoff competition, was that uh, goalless draw at Roots Hall give the advantage to Doncaster? Well, pleased with the performance. I thought it was it's a difficult place to go. They're one defeat in 15, so they're one of the form teams in the league. Uh, good team. Um, so we were pleased. We were organised and we're disciplined, and uh, you know, we can play better than we think we can. Um, I'm sure they'll, they'll be relishing the fact of coming to Doncaster and uh, again and, and getting a result here as well. I think there's anticipation. I think that's what um, you know most most players want to want to play in big games, and uh, as are no different to, to South End's players. So uh, you know the circumstances make the thing a little bit different and what's on it. But uh, I'm sure that uh, everybody's at this moment in time keen to go out and play, keen to get into the team, uh, and keen to keen to perform uh, as as the night progresses. Maybe that might change with. Uh, however, however it goes, you know the first the first goal will be crucial when you get it. Uh, what, how do you react to that one? And if you if you go behind again, how do you react? You know we make sure we've got to do whatever happens in a positive manner. This season, people calling you the Arsenal of the league you're in. Um, are you going to still try and stay true to those principles even though the stakes are so high? Well, it's too late to change now. Uh, no, you play the right ball. You know, the right ball's a 40-yard crossfield bag, normally when you play it, and if it's a short one, then you, you know, I think we've, we've, that's what we've tried to drill into the players. Uh, whether you want to play football long or play football short or get your crosses in or play through the middle, then you know, we're, we're trying to develop understanding and responsibility in the players. So, and, and they've, you know, to a man, they've, uh, they've responded really well. Well, Richie Wellens missed the first leg with groin injury. You talked about him already, Peter, but how important is he to the way they try and play? Yeah, very important. Uh, the player from the back, Dave, you know, they've all got real confidence in each other to give the ball to people who were even tightly marked. That draws people out of um, defensive situations and they can exploit that. 
The only thing that I criticised them on really is the fact that all too often there's not enough threat through the middle. And that's because they have this incredible fluidity. And we've seen that the, the chairman calls him the, the Arsene Wenger. I can understand that because they do pass, pass, pass. Well, Southend certainly do have a threat through the middle. It comes mainly in the form of Lee Barnard, who had a cortisone injection just two days ago in an ankle problem. He plays tonight having come through a fitness test. Is it a gamble? Is it worth a gamble? It's definitely worth a gamble. Um, we've seen Beckford do the same thing for his team. Be brave, be strong, go through the pain barrier because, you know, the rewards are there at the end of the day and, and he won't feel that ankle whatsoever if he sticks one in the net. And he's been a revelation since he came from Spurs, a very, very astute sign, and he can play with his back to goal, and he's also got a very, very good touch. Well, the South End manager, Steve Tilson, is another with player of experience. Let's hear from him now. He's with Fraser Dainton. Steve, it was a fiercely fought encounter a week ago. Are you expecting more of the same tonight? Yeah, I think it's going to be another tight game. I think the, you know, the game last Friday was full of energy, full of commitment and desire, and I don't see any different tonight. Doncaster have got a proud home record. They haven't lost here since April the 1st, but your away record's been pretty good too, just one defeat in nine. Yeah, I mean, we've, like I say, we're one in nine and uh, one defeat in our last 16 games. So, obviously, two sides in full, and, you know, it's a, a massive prize at the end of it. So, like I say, I don't think there'd be any difference from last week. For you personally, you've been through this before in a, a playoff campaign and been successful. How important will that be for you tonight? How much will it help the experience of your players? Um, I'm still nervous, put it that way. But uh, no, I think there's, there's three or four players that you know were involved in the playoffs, and that and that'd be a help. You know, they guide the others through. Then they know how important the game is tonight. Um, so, yeah, like I say, I'm just looking forward to a, a good entertaining game tonight. And have you practiced your penalties? We have indeed. Um, no, I mean, you've, got, you've got to practice everything. You've got to, it could, could go to penalties. So you know, we've um, we've had to do our do our bit and get practicing on the training ground. Thanks, Steve. Cheers. Thank you. A couple of thousand have made the trip up from Essex tonight to see their team. They've been rewarded generally on their travels this season, Peter. They've seen their side win ten times and scored a lot of goals along the way. Yeah, I, th I think there's, uh, there's only the champions who've scored more goals. I think they've had 35 five, uh, goals away at the moment. It's a great return. And, and they've had fantastic last three, four seasons. They've always been in the mix, either relegation. They had the promotion through the playoffs and then they got automatic, uh, automatic promotion, went one better. Yes, they got relegated, but they realised that Steve Tilton is the man. They're playing some very good, fast attacking football and um, they've been rewarded for travelling all over the length and breadth of the country. And as you'd expect, they've turned out from Doncaster in their numbers here as well tonight. Expecting a crowd in excess of 12,000 at this relatively new Keep Moat Stadium. Again, as Southend are good away from home, Doncaster strong at home. Yeah, that's correct. And. Um, you know, you can't, can't be overwhelmed by Doncaster, particularly in the early stages, because they do dominate possession. So they've got to stick in and be strong and, and resolute of South in, in the knowledge that their time will come. We've seen the trend in this season's playoffs is for the away side to dominate. What do you think sir, that is down to, Peter? I think it's the pressure, and particularly at Doncaster, there's a big turnout. We saw it at Leeds, we saw it at Carlisle. And, and it's an extra pressure on the players, and they've got to handle that. And it's usually the team with the most experience that does perform the better. Interesting, we've heard from both managers as well. They have been practising their penalties. How key could that prove to be? You've got to prepare for every eventuality, and it, it's so tight. Goals change games, we've seen that. You know, misses change games as well. Someone's in the ascendancy that the amount of twists and turns in a half of a football match, never mind in a two-legged tie, is incredible. I should uh, say as well that Doncaster involved in the longest ever football match on these shores. 1946 will be new to you as well. Uh, they played in a, a, a knockout game against Stockport. They couldn't be separated after extra time. Uh, they went to the golden goal after 83 fruitless minutes. They decided to give up. Uh, we hope we get a resolution before then tonight, Peter. Well, otherwise, I'm clean-shaven now, Dave, and I'll have a beard like Father Christmas, me thinks. <laughs> well, apparently on that occasion, people actually went home for their dinner and came back to see the end of the game. Tremendous atmosphere here at the Keepmoat Stadium. Fifty years ago, they last played in the second tier of English football. They feel it is their turn to be back there now. But remember, Leeds waiting in the final for both these sides. The commentators tonight, Gary Bertles and Alan Parry. Thanks, Dave. Neither of these clubs has ever played in a major Wembley final, so whatever happens tonight, a little bit of history will be made. If 
Doncaster get there, they'll be facing a local derby against Leeds United, a real extra incentive, not that they really need one. Key midfielder Richie Wellens returns after missing the first leg through injury, and the other change sees James Hayter coming in for striker Paul Heffernan, who's suspended after being sent off just minutes from the final whistle at Roots Hall. South End are happy to take the role of underdogs tonight, but they do have an excellent away record this season. Ten wins on the road, and only the champion Swansea scored more goals on their travels. The good news for South End is that Lee Barnard is fit to play. The former Tottenham striker had been doubtful with an ankle problem. So the only change from the first leg is in midfield, where teenager Frank Moussa replaces Tommy Black. Two strikers on the bench for Doncaster, Mark McCammon and Gareth Taylor, and Southend also go with two front men in reserve, Charlie McDonald and Alex Russell. Well, this is Doncaster's first full season in their new stadium, and it's never seen an atmosphere quite like this, adding to the attendance tonight, Gary McAllister, who knows already that his and Leeds United's place at Wembley in the final for this division is secure. Attendance here is close to the capacity of 15,000, and it includes, as you've seen, a couple of thousand from South End, who laid on free coach travel for their supporters. South End lost 3-1 on their only previous visit to the Keep Mode Stadium. That was for the league game back in December. But Gary, with the tie so finely balanced tonight, it really could go either way, this. Well, we saw that from the first leg. Both teams get the ball down and play. I agree with Steve Tilson. There was a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. But what it did lack was quality in the final third. Delivery wasn't particularly good from set pieces. I'm sure both teams will be looking to provide better quality in this game tonight. Now, normally you'd favour the home team. Uh, but we saw once again at Carlisle last night and in so many other games, that doesn't seem to matter in the playoffs. It doesn't. It's a totally different kettle of fish, the playoffs. Forget about the league. It's just about who's got the bottle to, to go out there and be brave, to have possession of the ball, and to, to make mistakes, if you like. We're all going to make mistakes out there, and it's just a team with a better belief, a little bit of experience. It's just got every ingredient in this game because of the way both teams play and both teams are set up. So far in this season's playoff semi-finals, there have been more away victories than home wins. My first visit to the Keep Boat Stadium, a beautifully appointed arena, I must say. Very uh, handily located as well on the edge of town. And it's really rocking tonight because Wembley is the massive prize on offer and they both need a map to find it. These clubs have been around for over 100 years without treading the most famous turf in football, but for one of them, the dream will come true in a couple of hours' time. Goalless in the first leg, everything to play for as Doncaster take on Southend.